All right, it is a brand new day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Monday, August the 30th, 2021. Five days till game day. Great, you'll love to see it. Five days from now, kicking it off on Willie B. And, you know, we got the drum line performance, we got the pep rally, we got team walk confirmed by Shane Beamer and them today. Gonna have, you know, live pregame halftime, can be great. But yeah, just chilling out outside of Russell's house after getting out of U Band earlier today. I want to share a bit of an update I got from <laughs> that was sent out through the Wardrobe Band Remind. And that until next Tuesday, all band activities are currently suspended, which is questionable. I have not been able to talk to anybody yet because of my busy day today. So I have no idea what the hell is going on in Wardrobe. I mean, I have a few theories like, like prayers to everyone down in Louisiana. And, like, I know with some hurricanes it's affected some things, but, it, like, it was lack of diesel, but it wouldn't affect, you know. Like, all it affected was us not going to an away game that week. It's a home game, and we're canceling rehearsal too, so it could be COVID within the band. But last year, like, during band camp in 2020, a section got COVID. That did not cancel all of band camp, so I'm just really curious to see what's up. Especially since... Gilstrap and Will are supposed to be bringing four kids up here on Saturday for the for the for the Eastern Illinois game, as I mentioned before, with the you know Carolina Band Day. So it's gonna be really interesting going forward. But yeah, no football game happening Friday. I'm not going back home, but we should still should have you know a fun day Saturday. Let's get it. Five more days. All right, it is a brand new day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tuesday, August the 31st, 2021. Four more days until kickoff, and it's been a big day. Depth chart got dropped on us at like 10.15 in the morning while I was in class. So a few takeaways. Josh Van, Dak Joyner, Jalen Brooks. They are starting wide receivers. Shane Beamer has been talking about them all during fall camp, so that makes sense. I expect the Marion Brown to be pushing for playing time as, you know, he sat out the first half of camp due to COVID. We don't have a running back one listed as it says, Quang Long White, or Kevin Harris, or Marshawn Lloyd, or Juju McDowell, but all of them are going to see the field, even Kevin Harris, who is getting cleared for his back, from his back procedure over the summer. Starting quarterback, Zeb Noland, previously played at Iowa State and North Dakota State before coming here in June as a grad, graduate assistant. But he had the most experience out of anyone after, you know, since Luke Doty's injury. Playing in the Power Five and at the FC, and you know, at arguably the best FCS program, and in the spring, so a few months ago, he was playing an actual football game more recently than anyone on the roster. And that's, he's only the he's only the starter for Week One. Doty is the team's quarterback. He is the best. He had the best one to you know have the keys to the car. So you know, I highly expect him to you know take the job back whenever he's healthy. Hopefully by next week for ECU, but. He is doing good. He's in tennis shoes and should be practicing by the end of next week and be close to 100% for the East Carolina game. So yeah, anyone spreading the rumors and narrative that, you know, we have grabbed him out of nowhere like Uncle Rico walking up the halls, talking about what he did back in the day, stop. Anyone pushing the narrative that he's going to be the starter for the season that's going to be Colin Hill again, stop. All oh, that's from Shane Beamer. He wants the narrative to be done. And yeah, his backup, Jason Brown. He's going to play Saturday. He's going to play early, according to Shane Beamer. Okay, that's everything on offense. On defense, Debo Williams got pushed down hard on the depth chart in the middle linebacker spot. You know, a pretty good, you know, highly talented transfer from Delaware as long as, you know, he can adjust to the SEC level. And then for the, for the secondary, my guy Marcellus Dial, fellow Woolger Class 2019 graduate, he transferred in, well, the transfer. Uh, he came from Georgia military in the Juco level. He's starting at corner. And then, you know, Cam Smith, neck guy up, should be back coming from injury. But it's still going to be a red flag on this team. And then on, you know, special teams, we got some speed at kickoff and punt return with Dak Joyner, Juju McDowell, Josh Van, and Marion Brown. Yeah, Beamer Ball, special team, you know, it's going to be good. We're going to get some Beamer Ball special team touchdowns. And he also dropped, Beamer also dropped the uniform combo in his press conference. Going to be white, garnet, white, the traditional home uniform, which is great. 
And he honestly wants to have, from what it sounds like, he wants to have a big old departure from World Must Champs Battle Armor videos he would drop. With a quote being, let's not worry about how we play. Let's worry about how we play, not what we're wearing, which, you know, it's great. <laughs> because they, it feels like with Must Champ, they always care too much about what we're wearing. And then, you know, got blown out. And they, they keep dropping Battle Armor videos and we keep being blown out. And it's, you know, just completely random uniforms. Like, we can't have a basic uniform. Like, we need traditional uniform, which we have. All white at, at away games. White garnet, white at home. And then white garnet, garnet, you know, big game garnet. Like, you know, for, you know, big games. Like, sad that this is a big game, but when Kentucky comes to town, that's just the state of the program at this point. But yeah, that's take away some Shane Beamer. In terms of everything that's happened with Woodruff yesterday, with the band getting suspended for the week, I would talk to some, you know, some people, and it looks like COVID is hitting hard in Woodruff. And there are 79 cases within the student body, according to the district website from yesterday, their COVID update. And that caused the cancellation of March Men this week, because I was told there was four to six positive cases within the band. And also canceled the football game, because apparently the team also has COVID, so... Not going great in Woodruff. Hopefully that gets better. But Gilstrap is still supposedly bringing the four kids to the Eastern Illinois game this weekend. So we'll see how that turns out. But four days. Four days until kickoff. <laughs> brand new day hello everybody and welcome to thursday september the 2nd 2021 two days two more days and it's great there's college football actively on right now ohio state minnesota is happening i think tennessee and boiling green is happening we got citadel coastal carolina we got east carolina app state you got UCF, Boise State, and a lightning delay, unfortunately. You got some, you know, high school friends up there. But yeah, lots of football is happening. Gamecock football, two days from now. Got some performances, 445. We got the team walk. I don't think we're doing drum line performance, unfortunately, based on all the high school stuff happening. But we got a very full day from 11 a.m., I'm loading the truck to, you know, probably like a 12 a.m. getting out. I'm just so excited, man. Two days away, let's go. <laughs>
is a brand new day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Friday, September the 3rd, 2021. It is game day eve, and I am so pumped. I am so pumped for tomorrow, and it is great. It's currently like 10 o'clock at night. Getting a few things done, and I'm going to get to sleep. Wake up, we get game day. We get 11.45 warm-up, 12 o'clock downbeat with the gridiron tomorrow morning or afternoon. That's where we get to, to meet all the high schoolers. You know, Gilstrap bringing a few from Woodruff. That's still happening despite Woodruff COVID issues. And then, you know, the, the, all the pregame stuff. But tomorrow going to be amazing. First normal game since 2019. So we get the return of tailgating, the return of full capacity. We get the we get the return of the Carolina band with live pregame and halftime on the field. We get the start of the Shane Beamer era. You know, after what Muschamp done to this program in the past two seasons. Shane Beamer, Beamer now at the helm, and we get, you know, a dub. A big dub tomorrow against Eastern Illinois. And, you know, when we get this dub, the sad thing is going to be our first winning record in 2018. Yep. And then we have all the high schoolers coming by, Gilstrap coming by. It's going to be first time seeing him in a few weeks, and just seeing Woodrow people in a few weeks since, you know, I didn't go to the game that, that didn't happen tonight because it got canceled. But yeah, tons of storylines. I'm just ready to spot the damn football at this point. Let's go. <laughs> After months of counting it down and months of working on stuff, it feels like it's finally here. Let's freaking go. Sandstorm. 
game isn't even playing yet. God. Alright, it is a brand new day. Hello everybody and welcome to Sunday, September the 5th, 2021. Back home for the Labor Day holiday. Drove back this morning after wrapping up the Eastern Illinois game yesterday. Just caught the ending of the Florida State Notre Dame game and what a game that was. Unfortunate that Mackenzie Milton wasn't able to lead Florida State with the comeback, but it was still a good game. As was yesterday, South Carolina beat Eastern Illinois 46 to nothing. A good old shutout victory to start off the Beamer era in style. The first one since the since the 2008 opener against North Carolina State. But yep, obviously, as we can tell with this game, Beamer ball has definitely come to Columbia. And it's alive and well. We're scoring on offense with four passing touchdowns in the first half. We're scoring on defense with a Jordan Birch pick six. And, you know, another interception in the game on the very first defensive play. And then we've had two block punts. In the first half alone, was, you know, first block punt from South Carolina since Florida 2014, in which, you know, Steve Spurrier beat Will Muschamp down in the swamp and got Will Muschamp fired from Florida. So that's how long it's been. But yeah, we're leading the country in block punts with two. UCLA and, and UAB have one each. But yeah, you can tell that Beamer is definitely an aggressive, going to be aggressive. He said he was going to go for it on fourth down. He... Went free for free on fourth down call on fourth down conversions, including a fourth and goal situation. And you know, first touchdown of of the Shane Beamer era had a, is a two point conversion, and they were literally playing for this for like all week apparently. I you love how you know aggressive and gutsy Beamer is. That must champ get you know. I I like most of the time I, I personally I just never see a use of punting on fourth and one or something like that. That's just bull. Or, you know, kicking a field goal when you're down, like, 21. Because that's what Muschamp did. I think no, most notably in the in the Tennessee game last year. But, yeah, defense feasted on EIU. D-line lived up to the hype. Zeb Nolan did exactly what he needed to do. You know, as my guy C. Phillips said, you know, give him the key to the car while Luke Doty's out. Tell him to go take it for a ride, get it back here unharmed. And that's what he did. But yeah. Running backs had a day. Quan White had a great day. Marshawn Lloyd had a great debut. And yeah, O line could have been a little better, but pretty good showing from the from the boys in Garnet and Black. Just great to have a winning record. <laughs> First winning record since 2018, which is sad. You know, it isn't sad though that Clemson lost. Clemson lost 10 to three against Georgia. So yeah, both Georgia and Clemson don't have offenses this year after. Well, I mean, Georgia's never had an offense, but... And then, you know, they can't replace it. They're not Bama with being able to reload as a losing Heisman contender, first-round draft pick quarterbacks. Yep, suck the sucks, Clemson. We'll see you in November. Have fun looking inside, you know, looking in towards the playoffs from the outside. But yeah, honestly, the best part about yesterday, though, was just... It was just great to have a normal day game day again. Seeing all the tailgating... 
seeing the full capacity, especially with that Florida State game, it was a great seeing that at full capacity, but it was just great to see Willie be packed again. I mean, it was only like 80% capacity, I think. It was only 80% yesterday, so it could be better, but a lot better than it was last year. And then, you know, just, it was great to have the normal Carolina band festivities, the pep, the pregame pep rallies, tailgate takeover, team walk, pregame and halftime on the field, and just the chills. Like, I was just grinning from ear to ear during the entrance from the end zone. And then there were just such chills for me and Jay during during the tunnel. Just the, the, the big old video that they got playing. And then when Beamer, was, and then, you know, this, the video of Beamer speaking, welcome home, now time for Carolina football. It was just great. And then it was great just to spend the first game, you know, back to normal, Will, Gilstrap, Hannibal, Shane, and Karina from Wardriff. It was just great. Because of the, the whole band day. Just really glad they were able to get back out here with COVID, even with everything that would have been going on with COVID. But yeah, Gilstrap said yesterday that they expect to be able to get back to rehearsing on Tuesday. They'll pop, they'll might have some people out, but they should be getting some people, enough people back to rehearse. I mean, we're not the only ones affected with COVID. A lot of things have happened with COVID. Even was it Seneca? I think Gilstrap mentioned Seneca, and they were, I think, at at South Carolina yesterday. So, just, you know, tough trying to do all this with COVID. But I'm glad that we're returning to a more normal, you know, time with competitions and these, you know, packed arenas and normal football game. But, yeah, it's been a great weekend. It's been a great week with game week. But yeah, tomorrow starts a brand new week. We got Labor Day. So, you know, just get a little bit of time off. To breeze, try to get this Eastern Illinois video done. But yeah, on Saturday, we're going to Greenville, North Carolina for the East Carolina game. So yeah, let's get it.